Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be doing an overview or I guess a deep dive look at resizable bar on a 7950X 3D uh, which recently launched about you know like almost two weeks ago now. So 7950X 3D, this is probably one of the best uh, hybrid CPUs for gaming and content creation with a 16 core 32 thread. And then we're also going to be looking at a Intel 13900K to see how well these two 32 thread based CPUs scale uh, with resizable bar in gaming. So um, just to get right into it here, uh, what is resizable bar? For those that don't know, resizable bar, um, it's, a, it's kind of a technical term that's been tossed around in the gaming industry on PC for a couple of years now since about 2020 when AMD introduced the concept of smart access memory or what they call SAM. Uh, which is essentially their version of resizable bar in the driver. Uh, but resizable bar stands for resizable base address register. So the base address register. Um, so it's essentially a PCIe feature that has existed for quite a while now. This isn't really a new thing. Uh, it just so happened that AMD decided to enable it in the driver, depending on whether or not the CPU, or assuming that the CPU and the motherboard, its chipset, support this feature. So this is something that has kind of been entering the market now for a number of years. So most most modern systems, if you have like a 11th gen Intel, 12th gen Intel, some of the older 10th gens as well, um, and then for the AMD Ryzen like 3000, so basically like an X470, X570 motherboard, now the new X670 motherboards, they all have this, this feature that you can turn on in the BIOS. So it's essentially a method for the CPU to access not necessarily just VRAM, but basically the entire frame buffer of a PCIe device. So in this case, we're talking about GPUs because we're talking about gaming, um, but it allows it to address bus sizes or I guess frame sizes above 256 megabytes. So if you do not have resizable bar, what ends up happening is every time the CPU needs to tell the GPU to do something, it sends a frame size of 256 megabytes or up to 256 megabytes. So I like to think of it as these 256 megabyte chunks that are sent sequentially across the PCIe bus to the graphics card. Um, but what Resizable Bar allows it to do is now it can address the graphics card with sizes, frame sizes that exceed 256 megabytes. It can actually auto negotiate sizes, I think even well beyond four gigabytes, uh, which essentially means that it can address the entire VRAM available on the graphics card. So it's kind of what AMD shows in one of their slides in the past of what it looks like where you have, you know, the GPU and then you have like all the memory on the GPU is now addressable simultaneously. So the test system that we're using for the AMD system, I'm using the Gigabyte x 670 e Aorus Master, where all the tests are done on Windows 10. Um, you guys know, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I always use Windows 10, I don't use Windows 11. Um, so that applies as well to Intel. So the Intel motherboard is a Z790 Aorus Master with a 13900K. Uh, I am using air cooling on both of these CPUs. It is the Noctua NHD 15. The GPU is a Radeon RX 7900 XT. So I chose to use a 7900 XT because it is not the top of the line one and we kind of want to give a real world comparison that shows what a modern GPU that supports resizable bar can do uh, when you turn on resizable bar and then also compare what it looks like when you turn off resizable bar. So we're using 64 gigabytes of memory, so it's G-Skill. Rip Jaws S5, so it's DDR5 memory, so two sticks of 32 for dual channel. Uh, Inland Prime PCI Gen 3 SSD is what I'm using that houses all the games. And then an MSI Meg AI 1300 watt power supply, so this is one of those newer power supplies. I have videos on the channel that show this power supply. And then the tests are done at stock configuration with power limits and force, so that means that no unlimited power mode, and the memory is running at the stock XMP 5600 megahertz profile. So the first game we can see here is Borderlands 3. It is an Unreal Engine 4 game. So I try to, to test different game engines to sort of give us a wide representation of 
what you can expect a given engine to do when you turn on resizable bar. So in this case, we're looking at Unreal Engine 4 with Borderlands 3. Resizable bar off, you can see the performance numbers here. We don't really care too much about the absolute performance numbers because we're not really, this isn't supposed to be like a 7950X 3D versus a, a 13900K. This is more so a look at how the CPUs handle resizable bar scaling when you turn it on. So this is what it looks like with it off. And then when we turn it on, you can see in the case of the 7950X3D, it sees a 3% increase at 1440p, while at 1080p and 4K, it didn't really change much. You know, like if we go back, you can see it, in 4K, it actually went down one FPS on average, but that is margin of error. So it's, it's really, really close. Uh, and then, you know, like the the 1440p is kind of where it saw the biggest increase at 3%. However, the Intel CPU did see a really good increase here. So 8% increase at uh, 1080p, 7% at 1440p, if we look at how those numbers changed, and a 3% increase at 4K. So Borderlands 3, the Intel CPU did show pretty good scaling because typically you expect around, you know, like single digit percentage increases from resizable bar. Um, so let's look at the next game here. So Godfall is another UE4 engine game. I only tested two Unreal Engine 4 games. This will be the other one because it is kind of a modern title like Borderlands 3. Uh, and it's not super hard to run if you have a modern like a RTX 30 series card, for example, or an AMD 6000 series card. Um, so this is the results when it's off. And then if we turn it on, you can see that the 7950X 3D sees a 2% increase at 1080p and 4K, as well as a 5% increase at 1440p. Uh, meanwhile, looking at the 13900K, this game, it didn't really see any meaningful change at 1080p, but it did increase by a, a whopping 1% at the higher resolutions. You can see them there. So you can see the bars on the 7950X 3D are increasing more. Um, so it's kind of the opposite result of Borderlands 3. So again, it, this shows that the results with Resizable Bar can vary depending on the game, not just the game engine. So now we're going to look at the Decima engine. And Horizon Zero Dawn is typically the go-to game to benchmark because it does have a built-in benchmark tool. It runs a Decima engine, so it does kind of give us a good idea of what uh, a game that is well optimized for consoles, so think PlayStation 5, when it's adapted to the PC, uh, what the sort of performance looks like, how it scales on the PC. So with it turned off, these are the results. And then if we turn it on, you can see that this title, this is one of those titles that scales a lot with PCIe bandwidth. So for example, if you have an older PC that can only do PCI Gen 3 on the motherboard, or if you have an older graphics card that can only do PCI Gen 3, like for example, a GTX 1080 Ti that can only do PCI Gen 3. So the results for that GPU or an older motherboard, you know, like a, a first gen Ryzen motherboard or like an Intel Skylake motherboard or Coffee Lake motherboard, those can only really do uh, Gen 3. So their performance won't be able to scale as much in this title. Um, but you can see here, the 7950X3D sees a 6% increase at 1080p, a 7% increase at 1440p, and a 2% increase at 4K. So pretty good scaling for the X3D CPU in this title. And then for the 13900K, this is one where, again, it kind of depends on the game. 1080p saw 2% decrease. Like if you go back and look, so you went from 200 FPS to 195 FPS. Uh, but it did see a 6% increase at 1440p. See, so, so that's like a full 10 FPS bump on 1440p uh, on the 13900K. Uh, and it did see a 4% increase at 4K, so 94 to 98. So that's pretty good. But what, what I will note is the minimum FPS like went up across the board for both CPUs in a meaningful way. Look at those green bars. like. This is one where you definitely want Resizable Bar on for this title. 
Next is probably the weirdest game that I have added to my benchmark test suite, and I'm considering removing this game because this game tends to skew a lot of the results in a bad way. So this is Forspoken, probably one of the weirdest games. Weird in the sense that it, when it launched, it's super hard to run, and the percentage, like the the increase and decrease, it's kind of all over the place. Like, look at the 1440p to 4K results. Like both CPUs only lose two FPS going from 1440p to 4K. That really sounds strange, right? It's almost unbelievable. Um, that there's barely any drop from 1440 to 4K. So really questionable game uh, overall. I think like the optimization for this game, it needs a lot. Um, if we turn on Resizable Bar again, like nothing really changed. So the 7950X2D saw a negative 1% change by turning on SAM. And then the 13900K saw a decrease of 1% at... 1080p it was flat at 1440 and it had a 1% increase at 4k so really really questionable game uh, it's making me wonder like whether or not I should remove this game because it's it's it always ends up being the outlier uh, and it doesn't really scale in any meaningful way uh, when testing it but it's it's a fascinating game when it, because it's the only game that supports direct storage as of right now so next, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So this is starting to get kind of old in terms of the games tested here, but it's still a good one to show scaling. So this is the results for Resizable Bar Off. If we turn them on, this game barely scaled with Rebar, but you know we're talking like zero to two percent uh, in term for both CPUs. So not a whole lot of a difference there. So just kind of skip past it. But it's one of those games where it's like you turn Rebar on, you don't even need to worry about whether it should be on or off. Uh, and then Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. So this game, it's an MMO and it uses crystal tools. So it's very different from Unreal Engine games. Uh, it is an older engine by today's standards. Um, 7.0, for those that play Final Fantasy XIV, should get a big overhaul in terms of graphics and what they're going to do. I don't know exactly if they're going to change the engine or if it's just going to get upgraded uh, in a massive way to like DX12 or something. Um, but the upcoming expansion, whenever that shows up, will be a huge change to this game. So I expect it to be a lot more demanding to run in the future, or at least have an option for it to be harder to run for those that have much more modern systems. Because this game engine is basically the same engine that Final Fantasy 13 was using. And that game is, you know, more than 10 years old at this point. In fact, 2013 was... The launch of a realm reborn so this game is going to be 10 years the 10 year anniversary uh sometime this year in the second half of this year but anyway these are the results with it off if we turn it on you can see that the 13900k saw one percent increase across all resolutions with rebar enabled and then the 7950x 3d saw one percent increase at uh, 1080p and a three percent increase at 1440 and 4k so Pretty good scaling there, but you know, it is it is what it is. It's an older game, so I wouldn't expect it to scale too much with Resizable Bar. Uh, and then the last game that I tested is Far Cry 6 because it covers the Dunia engine. So this is another engine, it's, it's a proprietary engine, not uh, Unreal, not Unity, none of that stuff. So it's its own thing, and these are results with it off. Uh, and then these are results with it on. So this is a interesting game because, or interesting engine I should say, the 7950X3D saw a 4% increase at 1440p, 2% increase at 4K, and 1080p didn't really change much. Like if you go back, you know, it looks like it actually went down by one FPS, but that's like almost margin of error considering the minimums are higher and the maximum is higher with rebar on. Uh, but the 13900K did see really good scaling overall. So it saw 7% increase at 1080p a 6% increase at 1440p and a 3% increase at 4K. So this CPU did benefit a lot on the Dunia engine with resizable bar enabled for the Intel CPU. So here are the overall results uh, in terms of the percentage increase average from enabling SAM, rebar, whatever you want to call it uh, across the board. So you can see like in some games 
in the case of Forspoken, we saw negative scaling except for 1440 and where it was flat for Intel. And then it saw a 1% increase at 4K for the Intel CPU, but it saw negative scaling for the AMD CPU. Um, and then everything else was kind of as expected. You know, you see in some cases, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn saw really good scaling in all cases, except for 1080p on the 1300K, but you know, that's 2%, so it's not a big deal. Um, and then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, not much scaling, very, you know, like we're talking like zero to anywhere from like negative one at 4K on the X3D to like 2% at 1440 on the 1300K and then flat, uh, you know, at other resolutions. So Final Fantasy 14, an older game, it did see scaling on the X3D, 3% at the higher resolutions. Everything else was like 1% across the board. Godfall. You know, we're talking anywhere from flat to 5%, depending on resolution. And then Borderlands 3 saw probably the most scaling for Intel. Uh, and then Far Cry 6 also saw good scaling on the Intel CPU when you turn on resizable bar. Um, and then here, over here, are the averages for them. So, so Intel saw a average increase of 2% at 1080p, 3% at 1440p, and 2% at 4K. The AMD 7950X3D saw a 1% at 1080 and 4K and a 3% at 1440p. Uh, so here's another thing that I wanted to include. So I wanted to look at the percentage increase on the minimum FPS from enabling SAM and rebar on these CPUs. And what's interesting here is the AMD CPU saw anywhere from 1% to, the, I think the best it saw was 20% at 4K resolution uh, for Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, and you can see, so I only did show four, or I only uh, recorded the results for minimums on these four games. That's the reason why it's only these four games. Um, I didn't have that data, unfortunately, for the other games that I tested. But it shows you, you know, like the AMD, the X3D CPU, either the Vcash either helps compensate uh, for the lack of rebar because the percentages aren't as dynamic or they don't look like they're as big jumps as Intel. Although if you remove the Horizon Zero Dawn result, uh, then both CPUs look about the same in terms of their scaling. Intel did see really, really good scaling, though, by turning on Resizable Bar in Horizon Zero Dawn. And Horizon Zero Dawn, like I said earlier, that is that one game on this entire list that does scale dramatically with PCIe bandwidth. Um, I think Hardware Unboxed did a video years ago showing PCIe scaling. Like they, I think they tested Gen 2, Gen 3, and Gen 4, and they saw that Horizon Zero Dawn is like the one of those games that just scales quite a bit with PCI bandwidth. So that kind of sh explains to me like why we see these big, you know, almost 40% um, increase from turning resizable bar on um, for the 13900K. So, so that's going to be it for these results. If we look at my conclusion now, what I would say is if you have a system that allows you to turn on resizable bar in the BIOS, I definitely recommend that you go ahead and do that regardless of what GPU you have today. Um, because even if your GPU doesn't support it, it's, you might as well turn it on the BIOS so that when you do upgrade your graphics card, then you do have that functionality available. Um, and you never know, you know, like older GPUs could get support. I know that in the case of the Radeon GPUs, AMD did add resizable bar or smart access memory for the older cards like the RDNA 2 and the Vega and all that stuff. They did get support for that uh, later, later down the line. Um, so... I think NVIDIA, I don't know if 10 series has support, but I know like 30 series definitely has support. Um, so it improves the average FPS in the single digit percentages. So in the case of the games that I tested, one to 3%, uh, and then the minimum FPS saw double digit percentages, you know, on average about six to 12%. So overall, I definitely recommend running Resizable Bar or turning it on and using it and just you don't really need to worry the negative the the small 
scenarios where I saw negative scaling, you know, that we're talking like 1% at one of the resolutions tested, and then we still saw positive scaling um, at higher resolutions. So benefits both AMD and Intel processors, so that's really good to see. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this content and found it uh, insightful. And if you have any questions below, or if you have any questions on any of the tests done, or uh, any questions about like platforms, uh, or resizable bar and that sort of thing, please leave a comment below. And if you like this content, feel free to subscribe. It does motivate me to keep making more videos like this. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.